Okay. <coughs> First of all, I'm very grateful to organizers for this invitation. I'm proud that Paul Benishai organized with, with the help of all other people this very interesting talk. First of all, I'm scared. What I heard before, I started to be scared. I want to be in the 19th century where there was no electromagnetic radiation at all. Now we are all exposed. And we're exposed, I think, every year we're exposed more and more and more to the higher frequencies. And actually, the consequence is not yet clear. So I'm going to speak today about uh, maybe a little bit very high frequencies for all what discussed, not 2.5 gig. This is uh, 3G, not uh, 5 gig, 4G, not 62. By the way, 5G, which is started to be in out uh, the um, first trials, was 62 gig. So it's now expanded to 62 gig. And, and I know that in California there are already few uh, transmission of such kind of uh, Wi-Fi was uh, tried. So I have today speak about much higher frequencies, and of course I'll speak about the very interesting feature of our skin, which everybody knows is multilayers. And here the um, cartoon from 2002, where this one is sweat gland, and this is the duct which is bringing sweat to the <laughs> surface of our skin. Now in reality, in this particular place in stratum corneum, the skin looks like, the, the ducts looks like this. You see, it's a very nice helicals. Now we have something like five. Sorry. You, you cannot hear me? No. For the camera. Oh, I see. Because, you see, I think I, I have well trained for lecturing and speaking, and you, you're supposed to hear me quite well. So what's interesting that uh, we have something like between two to five million, two to five million ducts on the surface of our skin. It's only a clean sweat ducts. It's the feature only of high primates, and we are part of the high primates. And all of these sweat ducts are helical. Now, Now, in now our days, people already know about this. It's really helical. The cartoon from 2018 already showing you that this is helical. And what's more interesting that when you're looking as a radio physicist, and I'm a radio physicist by education, on this very interesting shape, and you compare with the old cartoon from 1948 of the book of antennas, and this is the helical antenna. <coughs> Now, people using helical antennas quite a long time ago, array of helical antennas for communication. And of course, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, there is a chance it is a duck. So if it looks like antenna, can it work like antenna? This question we asked ourselves with Paul 2005. So actually, it was 15 years ago. When we asked this question, we got some small money, 30000 dollars uh, per year, and it was for the crazy ideas. So it was absolutely crazy idea that if we have the array of helical antennas on our body. So the helical antenna, very, very briefly, have two modes. One is normal mode, like a dipole. It's going different directions. And another one is axial mode. So. Axial mode is more interesting because in this case for helical antenna it can also uh, be or left, right, or left hand or right hand polarization. So it can be polarized. So our question was in the beginning when we just started to work with this, what are the charge carriers? Ions are very slow. And according to this geometry, the frequency have to be around hundreds of gig. So for ions, no way. But protons can hope. And they can work as uh, electrons in the metal in all our organic systems. And the hopping rate of this, 10 minus 15 seconds. So the lifetime of the proton 
in such kind of mobilities, only 10 minus 5, 15, 15. If I'm making one divide on uh, uh, lifetime, I'm getting exactly this frequency band, which were predicted by calculation of Paul, who did it the first, uh, just due to the geometry of these sweat ducts. Now, because we went to the simulation, to designing the model, and I think our model is really quite, quite well developed now, and we took into account, of course, the distribution of water in the all uh, thickness of our skin, from dermis up to stratum corneum. And we know exactly the water profile. And we got this knowledge from Raman measurements, how much water on the very deep layers of the skin and how it's decreased with increasing of the, uh, the thickness here. And we put the helical antenna in this multi-layer skin. And we made a simulation. And we saw that there is really a difference between the system with the ducts and without ducts. Moreover, it was shown that the main difference was around 500 gig. When we started our first measurements, and it was quite a long time ago, we had no, in Israel, it was only one or two network vector analyzers, and the highest frequency was up to 110 gig. Now, when we made a, our, our first simulation, we uh, sweep the frequency from 50 gig up to 700 gig. We estimated specific absorption rate, putting the plane wave in this frequency uh, spectrum on the skin. And what we saw, that really we have some kind of absorption of the electromagnetic wave and transmission this to the uh, thermal energy. So the main two frequencies where it was the biggest absorption is around 400 something and 500 gig. This is not in dB. You can see very clearly these two maximums. This paper was published three years ago, right? Three? Three years ago. And it was surprisingly already collected something like 4,000 readings on the research gate. Three hundred tweets. Yeah. Four thousand readings on research gate. So it's quite popular. I can tell you that the paper which I'm very proud as a dielectric spectroscopy is maximum one thousand two hundred, which were published a few years ago with Paul uh, on electrode polarization. One thousand five hundred. It was we are very, very proud. And here for three years, three four thousand, which is, means very interesting and very popular. Now, experimentally, we made quite ugly experiments with our, my students. It was in 2005. Uh, everybody knows Givatram mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Can you imagine August? And they run on this ellipse. So 20 minutes of running. Believe me, perspiration system was really triggered properly. So calm, run relaxation. This was the simplest experiment to trigger physiological stress. And we got a very interesting result, which we published in 2008, also quite a lot of readings, 8,000 from 2008, but it's not surprising, it's 12 years ago. Then we understand that it's not only physiological stress, we're also sensitive to the mental stress. Now, we trigger it not only physiologically, but also mental. And I'll show you in a few minutes how we trigger this. Then what was the most amazing, we saw really the difference between the right and left polarization. So circular dichroism also exists in our body. Now, when people are compare this with the monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzee, orangutans, they have only right hand helicals. Humans have 10% left. The question why, don't ask me. I don't know. This is still a puzzle. Now, other groups also started to follow our research. There are quite a few groups, one in UK, one in Korea, one in Japan, two in Japan, uh, one in the United States. They are repeating our old experiments in Switzerland and in England, two groups, by the way. And they're repeating our experiments on the low frequencies. Nobody went to the very high. Now, we succeed 
actually, um, this is just to show you the, the first experiments were very primitive with uh, this geriatric network vector analyzer, uh, which was worked on 110 gig. But even that time, we saw the big difference. You see, this is calm before running. This is when the guy returned back, and then he relaxed back. 30 minutes of relaxation. What was the most interesting that the way of relaxation was following very nicely the pulse rate and blood pressure after the stress. And the correlation between the blood pressure and uh, the intensity of our signal was surprisingly high, almost one. Now, sympathetic nerve system also triggered. And we know we are sweating when we are nervous, when we are under mental stress, when we are eating something spicy, or if you're, uh, this I know by myself, if I uh, quit smoking and then in a few years I took one cigarette and I see a sweating pulse. So the lie detector polygraph known already for 100 years, by the way, on, in 2021 will be exactly 100 years as polygraph Flower, was used. Please. Uh, I'm, I think I have quite strong voice, so I'm not going to shout. Can you hear me? Yes. Everybody hearing me? Yes. Excellent. So polygraph is knowing already for 100 years and quite successfully used everywhere, even not all the just, justice system already recognize it, but I think in most countries, I think this is already considered. And of course, we are triggering our perspiration system depending on different types of stimuli. You can see here when we are nervous, when we are just physiological stress, we want to cool ourselves, or when we're eating something spicy, uh, and we have this also interesting triggering of the perspiration system. Why the evolution or the research R&D department of Mr. God build this, it's still the open question. Now, we already at that time, we got a good uh, network vector analyzer. I think that time in 2008, it was the highest frequencies which we can reach here in Israel. It was up to 660. And now, of course, our days, if you have enough money, you can buy from Anritsu or uh, Keysight up to two gig, uh, 200 gig, uh, two tera, tera, two tera, sorry, but you have to pay quite a lot of money. And we, of course, uh, provide different supplementary measurements so with a pulse rate, electrocardiogram. Also, we have the galvanic skin response, which is actually a polygraph. And the results was also, uh, uh, we actually made the protocols of triggering the mental stress under the supervising of the psychological department. And one of the simplest was the color bird test. Here you can see by yourself that you will be very nicely triggered if you have to say what is the color of these letters, and you're always confused between semantic and what you see and what you see. You have very fast to tell us what is actually the, the color, to put the number. I passed this test by myself a few times, and I always made a mistake, and I was always angry with myself, and of course I was also triggered. Uh, the mental stress. And you can see, this is a typical experimental result for one of the guys. You see, first he is triggered, different levels of complexity, then he trained, he really know how to use this, and then it was so complicated he was really very excited. This is intensity of our signal. Uh, on one, it was on up to one, it was on one, it's W band, it's up to 180 gig, 75 gig. So, and then you're relaxing. And you always you see like a damping oscillator. You're relaxing, you see, with some kind of, of oscillation. It's like a blood, press, uh, blood pressure and also pulse rate. Also, after the physical training, also you have such kind of, of damping oscillating. So this is just comparison of the galvanic skin response in our signal. You can see for the uh, color word test and the hand grip, you can see definitely the reaction of the galvanic skin response. But in this frequency band, uh, our signal for physiological stress was not responding. So it depends. 
Now, this is comparison uh, with the different other parameters, uh, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, pulse rate, and finally, with the ECG, we see that we have very nice correlation with T, ST elevation for medical doctors. It's clear that it's one of the prediction of the heart attack and all these uh, problems with the uh, heart, uh, <clears throat> heart diseases. And uh, what's again interesting, uh, the nature created a unique pattern of our sweat ducts on the skin. So this is unique pattern, and you can really speak about the personal identification. This is two guys. One was Caucasian, one is from Iraq. And you can see in the frequency, this is two uh, Smith charts showing quite big difference. Now, this is 10 days, two guys coming to the lab in calm state, just putting their hand in the stand and measured. They're absolutely different. So, of course, it's much more important not to measure only one pixel, and with our network customers, we were able to measure only one point on the hand, but to get a camera to make an image. Unfortunately, up to now, there are not enough sensitive cameras which we can make simply the measurements of emission of the uh, skin. But if you radiate and see the reflection, we try to do this with this uh, camera. And this is actually the results, which are also interesting and encouraging when we irradiate and see the response. This is, was 380 gig, and actually we did it in a university. Now, this is chirality, which I already uh, mentioned because of the very short time. I want to skip this because it was quite complicated experiments for circle decreasing in our system. Uh, but what I want to uh, mention also Emotional stress. We also, actually, when we are scared, we are sweating. When we are driving in a very tough conditions, especially if you're driving in Rome, for example, from La Sapenza, from, from, from uh, the airport to La Sapenza, I remember my, my back was completely sweat. And uh, if you see the snake, you're scared. Not all of us, but scared. It was interesting to see when we showed the pictures of the gun or the aggressive dog to different people from different countries, our boys are not reacting on the dog, or on the, on the gun, but they're reacting on the dog. And some people from, say, we heard from, no, not from Switzerland, from Germany, yes. When we, they saw the gun, they showed the reaction. Most of our uh, students react on actually on the disgusting pictures. When you saw the operation or something like this, I will go very briefly. This is, for example, how the experiments was done. The number of pictures was suddenly showed to the ladies. It can be a very nice picture like the rabbit or the flowers or suddenly the operation on the open body. So our students from physical department react very, very strongly on this. This is, for example, this lady showed the strongest reaction on the disgusting picture. But if you're taking the students from medical department, they're not reacting. So very, very subjective and not reproducible. We still didn't publish these experiments on the emotional stress. Mental stress, very reproducible. Physiological stress, very reproducible. Uh, emotional stress, really complicated. Now, but what's most interesting, and it was actually the question which I got uh, something like three years ago, four years ago, four years ago, when I gave a talk in one of the radiophysical institutes, they told me, okay, you proved that you have an electromagnetic entity in the skin. This is true, you proved it. But it's not antenna. How to prove that it's antenna? In this case, you have to go for radiometry. You have to measure what we're emitting or we are not emitting at all. So we find one very sensitive radiometer, actually, which was developed for uh, radio astronomers and people who are studying the um, different, what they, it was for climate, yeah? They are studying pollution levels of light gases in the atmosphere. Yeah, so, uh, th so it was a really extremely sensitive radiometer, uh, superheterodyne with a sensitivity up to 10, um, minus 15 nap or something like can be sensitive to femtowatts or even hundreds of femtowatts. 
And this is the cryostat. The, um, the detector was in a very, very low temperatures. This is the hand again. We put the protocol when rest, mental stress, rest, physiological stress, and rest. <laughs> and of course, we now make this much shorter because in the first protocols, it was almost one hour when the guy was sitting with the hand. It was really difficult. He also was in stress. Here was much shorter. Now, what was the first interesting result? That it's a difference between the black body. Everybody knows, I hope, in this audience, what's the black body radiation. So, and the signal of the skin, there is a big difference. This is black body, just you see the uh, reference material in particular <coughs> temperature, and you see it's almost no signal in this whole frequency band. And here is the signal from the skin. And this is the period of the stress. This is one stress, this is another stress. Mental activity and hand grip. And this is the our signal, which we measured, red, and the black one is galvanic skin response. And then this is correlation between heart rate variability and our <coughs> signal SIR. And you see there are two distributions, one negative, one positive. When we first saw this, we didn't understand it. And then we learned from the literature that there are two types of reaction on the stress, de-stress and e-stress. So in one case, you can be depressed. In another case, you will be super active. And the people are actually 40, 60% are different reacting on the stress. This we learned from, physiological, uh, from psychological literature. And then we made even more interesting discovery for ourselves. So this is just the measurements for 25 people, six male, nine uh, female. And this was 25 or 23 measurements. And this is the histogram, just the level of the signal, the level of the signal versus the uh, temperature. And this is the temperature scale. And we saw two distributions, two big distributions. One around 32 degrees, 31, 32, and another one around 37 degrees. Now, core temperature, 37. You can get only if you're measuring or in the mouse, but not on the skin. Because here is usually 31, 29, 33. This is the biggest difference on the temperature of the palm. Because most of the core temperature is screened by the upper layers of the skin. How we can see this? So, and then Paul gave really a very interesting idea. <coughs> that core temperature just used this helical waves, helical antennas, as a filter, which is filtrating these particular frequencies, and this is what we uh, see as a mission. So we went to this simulation. When we put already the port, not from the top, but from the back of the our model, like this, here we put our source, and we saw on the transmission coefficient, not reflection. And this is the comparison of the experiment which was done by this radiometer from 400 up to 700 gig. This is the experimental points. And this is our simulation. You can see it works. So we are emitting, but we are also absorbing. Now, this can really be build a lot of interesting avenues for diagnostic but maybe even for treatment. OK, thank you very much for your attention. Before I'll finish, I want to tell that you see, even in 2015, it was uh, five years ago, we raised the question, 5G, if they will want to extend it up to 300 gig, is it not dangerous? We have a hardware which is receiving. And we don't know what will be the reaction of our central nervous system. Maybe all of us will be genius, but maybe zombie. Who knows? So thank you very much for your attention. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Have time for two questions. Uh, 
Thank you. Um, you showed the visualization of the difference between two individuals. Uh, and one of the questions that I'm very interested in is whether people who suffer from electro hypersensitivity are predisposed for this sensitivity. And I was wondering if you have any direction for an experiment that can be designed to explore this question. Uh, these two guys who we, we, try, we, we actually measured, one was Japanese postdoc who came every day and putting his hand. Another one was uh, our joint PhD student with Paul, who also was absolutely Caucasian, and uh, he also put his hand. So they're different. I'm not sure that one of them was extremely sensitive to electromagnetic waves. I, they didn't show. But actually, I heard what I heard today, and uh, we discussed it already a little bit with Paul. In order to understand what is actually the sensitivity and the consequence of this sensitivity of electromagnetic waves to the different bio systems on different scales of the body, not only of the humans, of all biological materials. The proper protocols and the proper experiments have to be built in order to verify calcium sensitivity to this in different channels, different mobility of proteins, DNA as well, and this have to be covered all the frequency band from, say, units of hertz up to terahertz. Because for time being, what I heard today, actually scaring, definitely, but it was more, how to say, it was not well defined and not well clarified. And what is really the the consequence of this electromagnetic explosive is not clear on different levels. It can be on different on the level of membranes, it can be on the level of lipids, amino acids, calcium channels, mm -hmm. GLUT, GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT5, also transporters can be sensitive to electromagnetic waves, but in the body they are screened. How this penetration depths, how it works. I think the proper experiments have to be driven. Actually, we discussed that the special center have to be organized for studying of this phenomenon on different levels of biological organization, starting from very simple biological molecules up to also organisms. And we have to be step by step and very well defined. Paul, I did a good job. You say I cut it half of my of my talk. <laughs> Enjoy your break and you can be my